Magandang araw mga fellow gun enthusiasts! Welcome to another video of Philippine Ricochet Line and today we are going to discuss barrel length restrictions. Alright? Barrel length restrictions. Okay, so before we begin, let us first uh, do our uh, disclaimers. First off, all of these firearms that you see here are licensed under Republic Act 10591. These firearms are not for sale and these firearms have been safety checked prior to this video, okay? But first, let's check them just to be safe. So check muna natin itong natin, no? S5P VAR, as you can see over here. No rounds in the magazine. We're gonna check it out here. Okay, as you can see, no rounds in the chamber. All right, so I'm gonna put this back here. Then we're gonna check out this Baratrum SPAAT. So as you can see, no rounds in the chamber. It's already open like that. No rounds in the uh, tubular magazine. Okay, so yeah, the firearm is safe. Okay, so next up, let's check out our uh, X9 over here. Let's get that stock out of the way. Okay, so the magazine is, has been removed. It's empty. And if we check over here the chamber, as you can see, it is empty. Okay, so this firearm is safe. No ammunition in there. All right, so, ano ba ang barrel length restrictions? Okay, so, ang barrel length restrictions, these are stipulations in the gun laws of many countries na nagsasabi kung ano ba dapat yung minimum length ng barrel mo pag yung firearm mo ay may stock. Okay? So, for example, itong Baratrum SPAAT, this is the barrel. Okay? At ito, this is the stock, okay? The stock is that part of your firearm that braces it against your shoulder, okay? So, papansin mo, that's the reason kung bakit meron tayong magnetic tape measure sa video na ito. That is because, for example, in the US, okay, if you're gonna look, the barrel length of this Baratrum SPAAT is pretty much 9 inches, okay? And sa US kasi, uh, when we have a firearm that has a stock and a barrel, naga apply na sa kanya yung ano natin ano yung SBR rules if the barrel is less than 16 inches. Okay? So, ano bang ibig sabihin noon? Ibig sabihin noon that if you have a weapon like this, okay? Shotgun. Yung barrel length niya is 9 inches pero meron siyang stock dahil sinabi natin na sa SBR rules ng US for example, meron tayong uh, limit na 16 inches and if it's shorter than that, nag apply na yung SBR rules or in this case SBS or short barreled shotgun sa US. Sinabi natin SBR, short barrel rifle, yun ano, applies to this one. Um, if the SBR or SBS rules apply to that weapon, you have to pay an extra $200 tax stamp. Okay? And yung $200 tax stamp na yun, medyo matagal. Dahil ipapaano mo pa yun, ikukuha mo pa ng SBR form yung firearm na yun. Okay? And this is important because marami nagtatanong uh, sa akin, ano, Philippine Ricochet Line, ano ba yung mga dahilan kung bakit mahal yung mga firearms dito sa Philippines. There are many reasons kung bakit uh, mahal ang firearms dito sa Philippines compared to, for example, sa US. Pero, uh, one of the reasons kung bakit, for example, pag nakakita ka ng imported, ano, US imported na pistol caliber carbine sa US, uh, tapos yung barrel length niya ay less than 16 inches, tapos meron din siyang stock, okay, uh, mahal na siya, Ma mas mahal siya ideally, kasi, kailangan mo kailangan ding bayaran kung sino man yung bibili ng firearm na yun at i-import dito na babayaran din nila generally yung ano ano yung $200 tax stamp. Okay? So $200 tax stamp plus yung ano na yun, yung time para 
ma-secure mo yung paperwork noon bago mo siya pwedeng uh, bilihin. So, that's the challenge of SBR rules. Okay? So, it adds 200, if a firearm has a barrel length of less than 16 inches and it has a stock, you have to pay an extra $200 in the US. Sa Philippines, thankfully, wala tayo nun. Now, ang effect nun kasi dito sa Philippines, kung wala naman tayo nun sa RA10591, bakit natin pinag-uusapan? You know, that's a valid question. Well, the reason for that is because if we import firearms in the US and they have those SBR rules applying to the firearms and the firearm qualifies for SBR or SBS classification, nagmamahal yung firearm. Okay? Because somebody has to pay the $200 tax stamp and SBR forms. Okay? So that is something that we have to know. Ang epekto ng SBR at SBS rules in the US is that dahil dito, um, yung mga ibang firearms nila sa US, ano, for example, ito, itong X9. Sabihin natin ito ibebenta mo to sa US. And it has to comply with the SBR rules. Kung ayaw mo magbayad ng $200 tax stamp, at ideally, gugustuhin mo yun kung gun manufacturer or seller ka, kasi magmamahal yung firearm at mas mahirap siyang bilihin dahil kailangan mong i-accomplish yung SBR form, which can sometimes take, you know, uh, a month or more doon sa US, ano? So parang licensing lang natin sa Pilipinas, mas mahirap, ma mas mahirap nang bilhin yung firearm pag ganun, ano? So if we check this firearm, for example, it ibibenta mo siya sa US, as it is, in its current configuration, you have to pay a $200 tax stamp for this. If you don't want to pay the $200 tax stamp for this kasi wala kang budget and you don't want to go through the hassle of going through the SBR uh, process, kailangan yung barrel length nito sobrang haba. Aabot ng 16 inches. Siguro mga ganyang kahaba siya. ba? So, this is important. Okay? So, medyo hassle siya sa US. And this is the reason ko bakit sometimes to some of our viewers over here who live in the US or for example, nagre-research kayo ng mga firearms dito na pwedeng bilhin sa Philippines and you come across pistol caliber carbines na for some strange reason may napakahabang barrel, that is the reason. Because they had to skip paying yung SBR uh, tax stamp sa US. Okay? And uh, the SBR was introduced a long time ago sa US to prevent, you know, mga gangsters from getting mga fire firearms that are easy to conceal in their uh, trench coats, for example, ano. And uh, back then, a long time ago, I think this was 1936 when, you know, 1936 National Firearms Act in, uh, in implement nila sa US. Uh, $200 was prohibitively expensive, okay? I think you could buy a car back then for like, what? I'm not sure, ano, pero $200, sobrang mahal na nun dati sa US. Napakalaking halagang pera na nun. Of course, as time went on and inf inflation took hold, ang nangyari is that naging mas affordable na yung $200, okay? So these are federal rules in the US. They apply to all states, even if they are pro-gun states sa US. So... That's the reason kung bakit meron tayong mga barrel and restrictions. And if you find one na sobrang haba ng barrel yan, epekto yan ng SBR rules. If you find an X9, for example, a, a US imported pistol caliber carbine na walang stock at maraming ganun, ano? for example, nakita ka ng CZ Scorpion Evo na walang stock. Parang tataka ka, bakit walang stock yan? Eh, napaka-ergonomic ng firearm pag may stock. Well, that is because uh, whoever bought that didn't want to go through yung SBR process sa US. Okay? So, I think, personally think na yung SBR rules, these are very draconian and outdated rules ano, sa firearm that, in my opinion, negatively affect the ergonomics of the firearm. Pero somehow, in the US, the anti-gun lobby believes na pag in-implement mo itong mga SBR rules na to, somehow it will reduce crime. I don't think that this is the case. So, ewan ko kung bakit ganun yung conclusion doon. Go figure. Okay? So, yan. So, sa atin sa Philippines, we can easily get firearms with folding stocks. Salamat na lang at wala tayong SBR rules. Okay? So, if you see firearms, again, that look like this, sobrang haba ng barrel niya, diba? That is because it has to comply with SBR rules and it wants to save the buyer the hassle of going through the SBR process. Okay? And if you find firearms like this na walang stock in the U.S., Parang mga mukhang ano to, ano, mga pistol caliber carbines or mga 
ano siya, no? SMGs. For example, SMG style weapons, submachine guns, na walang stock. Again, yan din yung dahilan dahil SBR uh, compliance yung talagang hinabol nila. Okay? So, it's important na malaman natin ito para masagot natin yung tanong kung bakit may mga firearms that look like this. Okay? And even in the US, in inventory nila yung pistol brace. Diba? To skirt yung SBR rules nila because a pistol brace is legally not considered a uh, stock. Okay? Despite the fact that it functions uh, like one somehow. Alright? So, yon, That explains yung SBR rules nila. Okay? So, there are other stipulations sa SBR rules. For example, uh, yung muzzle device natin. In the US kasi, uh, yung muzzle device ng mga SBRs, short barrel rifle, ay kasama sa bilang ng barrel length if it is uh, welded and teamed. Okay? So, kung welded siya doon sa barrel natin, uh, kasama siya doon sa bilang niya. For example, itong firearm na to, sa pag sinukat mo to, ano, yung length niyan, uh, 14.5 inches yung barrel length niyan. And the reason for that is because um, yung barrel natin nag-determinate dito. Hanggang dito lang talaga yung barrel natin. Ito, muzzle device na to. Sa US, pag hindi welded at pinned yung muzzle device natin, gaya na ito, ha, itong firearm na ito, uh, itong rifle na to kahit na pag sinukat natin, for example, ano, let's measure it. Okay. Pretty much, we're looking at, ano, ano, 16 inches. Mm, 16 and a half inches, ano. Around 16 and a half inches siya. Uh, sa Philippines, walang issue yan. Pag sinukat mo to 16 and a half, as you can see. Pero sa US, ang measurement lang nito ng barrel, because the, the muzzle device is not welded and pinned, ang sukat lang talaga niyan is ayan lang siya. 14.5. Okay? 14.5 lang talaga siya. So, itong rifle na to, pag ibebenta mo sa US, kailangan mo mag SBR form. Okay? You have to pay the SBR form for this rifle. If you're gonna buy it here in the Philippines, wala tayong ganung issue. Just get, uh, prior to May 2017, if you're gonna buy this, uh, you just have to go through the licensing process and pay for the rifle. Okay? And then okay ka na. Wala na tayong mga barrel and issues. Sa US, malaking problema yon. Um, yun lang ha, uh, as I would like to remind our audience, you cannot purchase 5.56 and 7.62 semi-auto rifles past May 2017. Dahil nga, yung temporary ban natin from the Marawi conflict ay hindi pa rin nalilift up until now. So, you know, I hope that uh, PNPFAO considers uh, lifting that. Anyway, that pretty much explains yung barrel length restrictions natin. Um, many of us think that Republic Act 10591 is, you know, a draconian law dahil mahirap nga yung licensing natin. And while it is certainly possible na makakuha ka nun, medyo matrabaho, high maintenance, at medyo magastos talaga no, yung licensing natin. However, thankfully, Republic Act 10591 has a lot going for it. Apart from not having magazine capacity restrictions sa ating mga batas, wala rin tayong um, uh, barrel length restrictions. Alright? So that is something na malaking panalo talaga ng Republic Act 10591. Okay? It saves us so much trouble that wala tayong tayong barrel length restrictions. Now, in case na, may, na if you're wondering na, Charles, bakit ang pistol gaya neto, safety check natin, okay? Bakit ang pistol gaya neto hindi, hindi nag apply sa bar barrel length restrictions nila sa uh, US. Ito, galing to ng US. Well, the reason for that is because, gaya nga nasabi ko kanina, this pistol does not have a stock. Okay? Wala siyang stock. At dahil wala siyang stock, hindi nag apply sa kanya yung uh, barrel length restrictions sa US. Alright? This is considered a pistol. If itong X9, tinanggal mo yan ng stock, it is considered a pistol. With the stock, it is an SBR. Weird, di ba? Pero, that's US gun laws for you, everyone. <laughs> Alright! 
So that pretty much sums it up. So as you can see, this is another win for Republic Act 10591. All right. So if uh, you liked this video, please consider like, liking and subscribing. And um, yeah, if you are interested in more discussions, please join your ating a Philippine Ricochet line in Facebook group. Okay. So thank you for watching our latest video and I will see you all next time for another discussion on gun laws here in the Philippines. Until next time, goodbye.